sports is competitive propulsion. Most sports utilize the propulsive power of the foot. The efficiency of that propulsive power, along with the propensity toward overuse injuries and traumatic injuries that athletes endure, are influenced by, if not the direct result of, the foot's posture. Performance and avoidance of injury depends on good form, which is good posture. Relatively small imperfections in form, repeated thousands of times during training and competition, can add up to major debilitating injury. The foot is a machine. It has a tented structure that experiences intermittent compression. The flexibility of this structure increases as the foot collapses its posture. We think that the purpose of this collapse is to absorb or dampen impact and decrease rigidity to adjust to variable terrain. Extremely important to allow for propulsion off of natural surfaces that are inherently uneven. Keep in mind that impact is deceleration as a function of time. If we reach the end of the range of motion of a particular joint at high velocity, deceleration occurs rapidly and impact can be catastrophic. If we reach the end of the range of motion more slowly, we decelerate slowly and impact is minimized and little or no damage occurs. Posture is a relatively new approach to foot biomechanics. Traditional foot biomechanics centered around a singular axis, the subtalar joint axis. Neutral position is simply a rotational position around this one axis. No singular axis can describe the symphony of motions that comprise the postural change that occurs in the foot. And in fact, if you were forced to choose one axis, the subtalar joint axis is a particularly poor choice. Firstly, its functional range of motion is only 6 degrees. This is 6 degrees. Isolating the talus and calcaneus and rotating around the subtalar axis 6 degrees looks like this. This motion is not postural collapse. Secondly, Hamill and Sharkey et al. showed that subtalar rotation does not occur in any plane from 25 to 90 percent of the gait cycle. Put that in perspective. Forefoot contact occurs at 27 percent. Most postural collapse is a result of the forces applied to the forefoot from the time it contacts the ground to mid-stance. Thus, subtalar motion does not correlate at all to postural collapse. Additionally, physics tells us that in any axis, if a force is applied on one side of the axis, it causes rotation in one direction. And when applied on the other side, rotation is in the opposite direction. What happens when the force passes directly through the axis? Nothing. It is interesting to note that the subtalar axis passes from dorsal anterior medial to plantar posterior lateral. The ground reactive force enters the body ideally on the plantar posterior lateral side of the heel. This passes the ground reactive force directly through the subtalar joint axis. No effect. Even more concerning, is that the momentum down the leg also passes directly through the subtalar joint axis. Again, no effect. In fact, the designer of this magnificent machine placed the subtalar joint axis in an orientation that would not be affected by the major forces passing through the foot during heel strike through mid -stand. Conclusion, no singular axis should be used to base foot myomechanics on, especially not the subtalar joint axis. Instead, we consider posture. 
Standing back from the foot, we observe that all of the 26 bones and 35 joints of the foot are participating in propulsion. Posture is the all-axis theory. Instead of worrying about single-axis rotation, called pronation and supination, look at postural collapse and the entirety of the foot with all its multiple joints and bones. The subtalar joint axis does have an important role. Once the arch is sufficiently elevated, the anterior facet of the subtalar joint approaches level. Then and only then can the talus slide posteriorly and externally rotate onto the anterior facet. This slight motion is enough to block sagittal plane motion between these two bones. The gastroxoleus crosses two joints distally, the talar cruel and the subtalar. If sagittal plane motion at the subtalar joint is blocked, the rear foot must rotate around the ankle axis, causing propulsion. Even foot posture is misunderstood. It is easy and tempting to assess foot posture in relation to the ground. The ground is flat, and collapsed posture gives us a flat foot, a reasonable comparison. I believe that Royal Whitman in 1896 was looking at foot posture from the opposite perspective. He compared the existing dropped posture to the ideal propulsive posture of the foot. How far does the foot drop from its ideal propulsive posture? So a very high arch may drop enough to weaken its structure while remaining high arched in relation to the floor. Thus, the foot posture index, as it is currently used, is flawed. Now let's examine a few common sports injuries and determine how both etiology and treatment are approached from a postural perspective. Throughout life, the intermittent compression of the tented structure of the foot will lead in many people to a postural collapse. Once collapse occurs, it is rapidly progressive because lever arms in the direction of further collapse increase and it is difficult to use the muscles alone to reverse this phenomenon. In the short term, one can consciously make positive changes, but as concentration is necessarily directed toward the sport and fatigue creeps in, progressive collapse is inevitable. Passing the downward forces of the body over such a foot causes damaging changes in the gait cycle. Propulsion is the transfer of force from the calf muscle through to the ball of the foot. How rigid the lever is will determine the efficiency of that propulsion, performance, and the extent to which ligaments are pulled beyond their anatomical limits. Injury. Plantar fasciitis is caused by the increased strain on this important ligament as the foot collapses. As the foot collapses, it elongates, which itself causes much of the increased strain. From a physics standpoint, the plantar fascia plays an important role in raising the longitudinal large after heel lift through the windlass effect. Note that the plantar fascial force is changed in direction by its attachment to the sesamoids. The force applied to the proximal phalanx becomes primarily horizontal. If we look at the axis of first ray elevation in relation to this force, we can calculate a moment or torque, which is magnitude of force times perpendicular distance. As the foot collapses, that perpendicular distance decreases. To get the same work out of the plantar fascia with the decreased lever arm, you have to increase the force applied to the plantar fascia. This was proven in the Geza Kogler 1995 cadaveric study 
where he inserted a tensile stretch meter into the fascia and compared orthotics of various arch heights in a simulated gait cycle. Podiatric orthotics, prefabs, barefoot, and the shoe alone were identical. The UCBL performed better, and raising the arch progressively decreased tension even more dramatically. Restoring functional posture was the answer. And indeed, in athletes, or anyone suffering from this condition, postural correction is the key to conservative management. Postural support limits the collapse, increases efficiency of the ligament, and decreases the microtrauma adding up to plantar fasciitis. It is often thought that the calcaneal navicular, or spring ligament, is a primary shock absorber in the foot. Now, it certainly can be if the foot is allowed to collapse to the end of its postural range of motion. A far better shock absorptive strategy would be to decrease the velocity at which pronation is occurring. The tibialis anterior is perfectly situated to accomplish this. Postural collapse involves a forward roll of the calcaneus around the heel rocker axis. The insertion point of the tibialis anterior is placed a long distance from this axis on the plantar aspect of the first metatarsal and medial cuneiform. This gives it excellent mechanical advantage to decelerate forward roll and prevent drop foot. It also causes the tibialis to be pulled the furthest when postural collapse is excessive. Thus, postural collapse tears the tibialis anterior at its weakest point. The insertion on the interosseous ligament, causing the tiny tears, hemorrhages, and inflammation we call shin splints. This is significantly reduced when we support the posture of the foot both in the velocity we approach the end of the range of motion and the extent of the pathologic collapse. Almost 70% of all running injuries that stop people from running involve knee pain. By far, the most common cause is patellofemoral tracking disorder. As the posture of the foot collapses, the knee internally rotates and the cue angle increases. The femoral groove is angulated more sharply on the medial side than the lateral. The increased Q angle causes the quads to pull in a more lateral direction, and the patella rides up the lateral side of the femoral groove, shearing the medial side as the knee flexes. Hence, the infrapatellar cartilage wears, causing patellofemoral tracking disorder. The solution is simple. Raise the posture of the foot which puts the knee on the sagittal plane, causing the patella to ride smoothly in the femoral groove. Problem solved in most cases. When the knee is on the sagittal plane, the anterior cruciate ligament and posterior cruciate ligament are not touching. But as the knee internally rotates, as it does during postural collapse, the ACL wraps around the PCL to the end of its range of motion. Plant collapse the arch, and twist tears the ACL. When the arch is properly supported, the patient has three things they didn't have previously. Time to contract the musculature around the knee. A resistive force decreasing the velocity at which the patient reaches the end of the range of motion of internal rotation and proprioceptive feedback from the full contact nature of the support. Once the ACL is torn, the season is over for that athlete. Prevention is the best treatment of all. In summary, repetitive compressive downward force on the foot causes postural collapse. An equal and opposite range of forces, such as a mass posture orthotic, must be applied to reverse the collapse and support the foot properly. Soul Supports. We make people better. Thanks for watching.